had to pitch and hook him. No second chance. Deep down, I knew he was yesterday's man and I was the future, but all the media hype that hung about him over the years impressed me against my will. He was such an arrogant prick. He'd make anyone nervous. He stood there staring at me like I'm a wood grub and he's a red gum. I took three indigestion tablets to try and stop the fury in my gut. I remember thinking as I swallowed them, why are you doing this? What are you trying to prove? I knew the answer before I finished asking the question. I wanted to prove to every bastard that ever laughed at me behind my back or sneered at the mention of my name or sacked me that despite a less than glorious career in insurance, real estate, sales, advertising, burglar alarms and pigs, I was a top artist waiting for the right time in the right game and I had found it. Coast watches. <laughs> I hated every minute of it. His writing was the worst. I'd sit there, grub-like, over my typewriter while Red Gum strode up and down, dictating the whole thing word for word. I'd get so pissed off I couldn't take it any longer. I'd offer a suggestion. He'd look at the ceiling and say, hmm, no, I don't think so. And he'd stare back at me. And we'd eyeball to eyeball for a sixteenth of a second. And I'd go back to my typing. <laughs> and the subject matter, coast watches, frankly interested me about as much as going to bed with a nine foot tall rugby league player which I have done under odd circumstances, which I won't bore you with. But an odd thing happened. I started to read the words I was typing out of sheer boredom, and I found that this arrogant prick was telling a story that was getting me in. Guys taking extraordinary risks under appalling circumstances while babies like myself slept on undisturbed. In the world I see around me where everyone's out for number one, this sort of behaviour gives you an odd jolt. The turd had the knack of making his characters live. <laughs>